two best friends and we're having a good time, having a good time, having a good time. Two best friends and we're having a good time, having a good time. Hello, good morning. Good morning, BBs. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And you can't see that there is a dog truly just off frame. Dagger's really, really just observing the show today. He's just exploring the space a little bit. Normally, as an executive producer, he's sort of hands off. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know, he, he does the big creative decisions, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but every once in a while, he's like, I'm just going to... I'm just going to tour the space and really yeah. micromanage everything. Yeah, unfortunately. Just, I'm so, just going to really micromanage the whole show. Yeah. So this is one of those mornings. As soon as we started talking, he walked right up to our feet and just stared at us. So he, he was just, wasn't digging the intro this yeah, morning. Yeah, he was like, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Talk better. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking bad. Talk good. Yeah. Have you decided, have you, have you considered talk good on camera? <laughs> and here's the thing. We got to talk good on camera now. We do. Because the money's back. <laughs> <laughs> the money's back. The strike is over, everybody. Congratulations. Hey, we can all talk about movies again. Congratulations. Uh, we can all go back to starring in Marvel films. Yeah, what we were doing beforehand. Yeah, every single one of us can go back to being a Hollywood millionaire Anthony, now. Anthony, let's get back to being in movies. Hey. You and me. It's time, you know. <laughs> I Let me tell you something. If I'm not in a big Hollywood movie... Every 119 days, uh -huh. <laughs> I get itchy. Yeah. And we just yeah. we just hit it. We, we just, just hit, hit it. it. Thank goodness. Thank uh, goodness. So, of course, we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the Hollywood fuckery that was going on the whole time and yeah. continues to go on. Uh, even though an agreement has been reached, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the sphere. We are going to talk about the sphere. I'm excited to talk about the sphere. God, we love the sphere. Well, Anthony <laughs> loves the sphere, so I'm very excited to talk about the sphere. Uh, we're, we've got trailers. We've got we've got modern warfare news. Unfortunately, that is unfortunate. We've got Jared Leto news. Unfortunately, that is also unfortunate. But we got a lot going on. We yeah. got a lot going on. Let me tell you something. Now that we're allowed to watch the current Hollywood productions again and talk about them, and, and again we're allowed to watch them, and and just we we weren't. They said, don't, they said, keep, stay blindfolded. That's not what they said. They said, don't you, you can watch, you can read a flip book is what yeah. they said. Yeah. Uh, but now that we can, now that we can really participate in the Hollywood conversation you know what again. I hope? What, what do you hope? I, this, I'm just going to be serious for a minute. Okay. I hope so desperately we just get one press day from the Marvels. Oh yeah. They, I, please, please give us one press day with those incredibly talented women. I have already seen a bunch <laughs> of like, social clips, Marvel just started throwing them up. I like, want it so bad. Immediately. But you know what I watched? Now mm -hmm. that we can talk about Hollywood movies again. What? Do you know what I watched last night? What? 10 year old episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh good. Yeah. Completely non-applicable thing. Really leaning into Hollywood being back, yeah. baby. Yeah, to celebrate, I watched um, episode seven of the worst season of Love is Blind ever. That's right. <laughs> also completely non-applicable. Hollywood is back. Hey, by the way, good morning, Alex. Good morning. Hello. That's, I woke up today and I almost didn't get out of bed. And that's pretty much what I have God, to share. Same. Absolutely same. Do you have any movies that you're like, oh, I haven't been talking about anything that you watched while the strike was happening that you didn't want to talk mm, about? I, I mean, I did watch Good Omen season two. And I was really excited about that. So yeah. not a movie, but a great show. Yeah, okay. that was good. I feel very passionately about. Excellent. But I haven't... Uh, Renfield? Did Renfield come out when the strike was happening? I think so. No. I no. definitely yes. watched it during before? the strike, but I don't know if- I watched it during the strike. Came yeah. out in theaters. Renfield was great. Renfield, Renfield was good. Renfield was genuinely was awesome. Uh, Sarah shouted out in chat and said Barbie. Yeah, we did We did go see Barbie together and that was a hell of a good time. Actually, uh, we went to Westfield Century City to see Barbie, which was awesome because it's referenced in the movie. Oh, so yeah. when they said, oh, you know, like the best place to be in LA or something, everyone in the theater cheered. <laughs> It that's was really awesome. cute. They had like a whole Barbie cafe set up there. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. It was really cute. Uh, yeah. Now we can say, I mean, that was one of the greatest movies of all time. Barbie is one of the greatest movies ever made. Should go down in history as a, an instant classic of film and cinema. That's right. Yep. That's right. 
Uh, people in chat are talking about it. So I'm talking about uh, Follow the House of Usher. Yep. Yeah. Everybody, what's, what's funny is like watching social media last night and every single person that's been involved with anything over the last six months, just posting all their BTS yeah. photos, posting all their stuff being like, it's over, but you can still watch it. Like, mm -hmm. go watch it now, please. Yeah. Like, everybody's like, we didn't get to promote it. Yeah. Please go see it. There's going to be a long time impact from this. And I want to be clear when we are talking about this, we were very pro strike, very pro union. Mm -hmm. uh, we we absolutely support. And also uh, we continually see that strikes work. Yeah. This is a, another uh, piece of evidence that, but we'll get more into the details of that. I mean, I guess we might as well now. Now, we'll get more starting. into the details of it. Right now. Um, <laughs> All right, uh, do it. Okay, so it, the, uh, this is called, uh, this has been called a historic strike and a historic deal. It's a historic strike because it's the longest actor's strike. Sure is. That has ever, uh, that has ever happened. Um, it's, I think it was 15 or 20 days longer than the longest strike previous, which was 95 days. Um, so what they said is, uh, they haven't announced in detail all the terms of the deal. Mm -hmm. That's not public anywhere. Okay. Um, you're a member of SAG. Did you get an email? You got an email probably, but it was probably just like. Yeah, I got like a celebratory email. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I don't I don't think, think I all the term details. Yeah, I don't think all the deets have come through yet, um, but we know that the deal will uh, apparently see most minimums for mm -hmm. actors increase by 7%, which is more than the minimums uh, were increased for writers and directors. Yeah, actors uh, actually did a little a little better in their negotiations at the table, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, raise it for everyone, cowards. Yep. Um, it's also now this is something that I thought was very very strange. They said that there will be a streaming participation bonus. We're getting a participation award. You're getting a gold star for being in a streaming show. Now, before, if you were in a streaming show, you got no money and a fuck you. Now you get no money and a gold star. Yeah. Um, what you actually got was called a buyout, typically. Mm -hmm. And a buyout has existed for a long time. But previously, it was something that you would only experience when you're doing things like industrials or things that were like, oh, we're going to play this in a business or professional setting. Yeah. Um, occasionally, you would get it for like international use on commercials and stuff like that. And more and, and, more, is, and more, it's with national commercials, unfortunately. Right. But. Um, so that is an upfront amount of money that is like, this is it. This is your rate for yeah. it. Uh, usually, that slightly exceeds the SAG day rate. But then we found with it, you know, as we got into more and more and more and more streaming content, that even going away. So yeah. all you got was a SAG day rate and that was it. That was so, the end of the money you would make in it. And, and the big deal with that is normally in uh, in broadcast television, in uh, theatrically released films, you would get residuals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the movie gets shown on TV, you get a little bit of money for the yeah. movie getting shown on TV. You get a little bit of money every time somebody rents the movie mm -hmm. or, or watches the show. You don't really get that on streaming. I think Aaron Paul once said that he got a quarterly check for like a hundred dollars for Breaking Bad getting hundreds of millions of views. Wild. Uh, and so that was one of the big, big things that this strike was about. Mm -hmm. uh, and it sounds like there are no streaming residuals. It sounds like what they got was a participation bonus for people who are in the most popular streaming shows is the way it's worded. Um, that's a little weird to me. Um, I want to wait to hear more details on that. Yeah. Uh, I really do. Because I'm curious when you say the most popular, is it a back end? Is it like points essentially where you're like, okay, if it does this well, then you get a certain amount of money? Or is it more like a buyout or something like that? I'm very curious bonus, to hear. Bonus implies to me a one-time payout or something. But I mean, I hope, I hope but, we see differently. But if you say it's only for the most popular, then mm -hmm. that couldn't be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they, they can't really measure that in a one-time thing. So yeah. what I've received right now uh, in my email from it, uh, from the uh, president and chief negotiator um, of SAG saying that um, full details will not be shared in advance of tomorrow's meeting. So they're meeting once again uh, because the board still has to actually take a vote. Technically, this is still a tentative uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. It's actually not a, a finished deal at this time, but it would look like right now everything's going to move forward with this. But what they did say is, the key deal points, and again, this is directly from SAG, so we wanna be careful to deliver uh, mm -hmm. accurate information. Uh, more than $1 billion in new wages and benefit plan funding, a streaming participation bonus, we're gonna find out what that means, minimum compensation increases that break the so-called industry pattern, for the first time, consent and compensation guardrails of the use of AI, 
raised pension and health caps that will channel more value into our funds and critical protections for diverse communities. So all of this is a little bit vague and that is intentional. Uh, after they meet today, uh, the strike is formally over as mm -hmm. of midnight last night or the night before. Yeah. Uh, so Thursday. I, so yeah. yeah, there are probably, there are probably a couple little tweaks that they're mm -hmm. going to make. So they they don't want to announce anything until it's actually signed. Yeah. Um, but there are, there are a couple, all of this sounds good, obviously. Yeah. But um, I'm interested to hear more details on a few of those things, particularly what the AI guardrails are and mm -hmm. what that streaming thing is. This says uh, that today the national board will be meeting to review the tentative agreement and vote on whether or not to send it to you, the members, for the ratification vote. So um, that's uh, that's where SAG is at on that. Yeah, it's it's sort of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is this is all good. Uh, it's good that everybody's going back to work. It's yeah. good that uh, everybody's compensation is going to be better than it was mm -hmm. before. Um, but we are interested to hear about some more of that stuff because the the Hollywood see it's, the Hollywood fuckery continues. What? It turns out that not only did they not pause the Hollywood fuckery during the negotiations, they didn't slow down. <gasps> they didn't even slow down. No. Warner Brothers has uh, written down another major film. Uh, which was Coyote versus Acme. Yeah, um, very interesting. This is another movie like Batgirl that was complete. It was done. It just needed to be released. Yeah, so uh, this is a $30 million write down, which uh, means that's you know at least what they spent on the movie or close to what they spent on the movie. Mm -hmm. um, but this was a, this was, we talked about it a little bit before. This was a mixed live action and animated film mm -hmm. where Wiley e. Coyote, after 60 or 70 years, decides to sue the Acme Corporation for selling him faulty equipment. It sounded like it was gonna be like a Who Framed Roger Rabbit kind of situation. It did. Uh, John Cena was playing his lawyer mm -hmm. up, against the, uh, up against the Acme Corporation, an independent lawyer going up against a big corporation. Yeah. Um, and, the early reviews of this movie mm -hmm. were so good. Really? Were insanely good. People said this was the best, this was the best like live action animated mix since Who Framed Roger Rabbit. People wow. were like very much invoking that. Um, people were saying that it was testing like in 90, 95% with audiences, which is very rare for a film like this. Mm -hmm. um, everybody was extremely happy with it. And it was just like, we can make more money by not releasing it maybe. Wild, absolutely uh, bananas. That is the third that we know of film that Zasloff has completely cut after mm -hmm. completion, uh, joining Batgirl and uh, a new Scoob animated movie. That's right, the ho the Holiday Haunting or Haunting yeah, Holiday. Holiday Haunt. Um, this is something that they're doing increasingly uh, across the board over yeah. at uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. And it's a real bummer. Now, there was a clip that was released last night by one of the crew members of Coyote versus Acme. Yeah. And it was a behind the scenes montage set mm -hmm. to I Fought the Law. <laughs> and uh, We definitely it, can't watch it here on the show. It, we'll get War in Warner Brothers so much trouble. has been taking it down. Yeah. Uh, as of this morning, the only place it still existed was a, uh, a Korean social media site. Warner Brothers might take this down just for mentioning them. Yeah, so Warner Brothers we, is like- We don't fuck with WB. Did you say Coyote? Cause that's, we own that. Cause we own those words. Um, we own you now for saying it. I gotta tell you, the behind the scenes, the production design of this movie and mm -hmm. watching the the amount of practical effects that were being done in this movie, like Who Framed Roger Rabbit style. Yeah. Like you could see there was like a hotel in the desert mm -hmm. and this huge like uh, just streak of smoke that was clearly the roadrunner running through the desert, but they made it look like an animated smoke, but they did it practically. Wild. Uh, they had like real brick walls falling on people, explosions, mm -hmm. like rockets. I was looking at it, I was like, this looks like such a fun movie. Yeah. And for $30 million, which is a lot of money, but not for Hollywood. Right. For $30 million, you could release that movie and make your money back and 100%. then some. 100%. Uh, Life Serial does bring up a good point though and said David Zaslav not wanting to release a movie about a little guy going up against a big corporation, shocking. Yeah. I don't know. Um, as somebody who uh, worked for David Zaslav, mm -hmm. uh, the second he became the the CEO and they bought Warner Brothers, I was like, this is gonna be bad. Yeah. Um, Warner, uh, HBO Max has lost over the last quarter 700,000 subscribers. 
That's not a small number of subscribers. That is not a small number of subscribers. However, you might think, ha, that means they're doing that. And you know, they've been removing massive shows from Max. Mm -hmm. They've been removing popular stuff. They've been canceling popular shows. Very much so. Uh, you know, Westworld didn't get its final season. A lot of these shows are- I didn't realize Westworld didn't get its final season. Westworld not only did not get its final season, uh, the moment it was canceled, they removed it from Max. You can't watch Westworld on, on Max. Wow. I think you can watch a season of it on Roku ad supported. Whoa, because yeah. that was one of their biggest shows. It was one of the biggest, most expensive. It was like the, it was one of their big golden age of television things. And they pulled tons of animation. They pulled tons of popular series. They pulled original films. And you might be saying, at the, and at the same time, they're raising subscriber prices every month. Yeah. And you're probably saying, well, this shows that they're failing. No. They're making money. Mm -hmm. They're they're more profitable. They were more profitable last quarter on yeah. Max than they've ever been. Gutting the art and ratcheting up the margins is actually helping them in the short term. I guess I'm just like so confused by their choices of what to cut. Mm -hmm. Not even to keep making. Okay. You're not gonna make another season of Westworld, it's too expensive. Yeah. But continuing to host Westworld. I know it is expensive. I'm 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 doing little quotation marks to host, but like, it's not more expensive to host that show than other shows. So why that show? Like, why take it off of streaming? It must have had people watching it. So I've got a theory, and I don't know if this is true. It's something okay. that I've mentioned before, but remember that HBO Max when it started before it was Max. HBO Max started saying that it was live simulcasting of HBO with some streaming. You remember uh -huh. that? Yeah. I think some of these older HBO shows mm -hmm. are on or were on HBO Max under an old residual structure. Mm. And I think they were making payouts on those shows. That is the only thing that could make sense. That's the, that's the other reason they removed HBO from the title is they wanted to make it very, very clear if they ever had to go to court, yeah. that it's not HBO, it's not a television network, it's Max the streaming service. Yeah. Uh, Brit JK said something uh, in the live studio audience, yeah. said, I've got a theory. All right. It could be bunnies. 100 out of 10 Buffy reference. 100 out of 10. That's good. 100 out of 10. That's good. Um, yeah, so it's, it's wild. I mean, it, somebody, uh, I saw somebody tweet, the other, the other night that was just like, hey, have you ever noticed that when you watch something really good on HBO Max and it, and it recommends something for you to watch next, it's never another really good thing. It's always like a reality show that costs them mm -hmm. nothing or like some throwaway TV series. Yeah, I don't know, I don't subscribe. I don't, I don't subscribe to <laughs> HBO Max either. Not anymore. Um, yeah, after, after the gutting of the Cartoon Network stuff and the restructuring at Warner Brothers There's Animation, no it's, it's Unfortunately, bad. it was no point. It was, for a while, one of the best. Mm -hmm. For a while, it was one of them like that you got the most value from. There was like the most stuff to watch on. And that's the thing is they looked at it and they said, oh no, too much, too much value. Too much value. People are getting product with this product. Gross. Yeah. Uh, no more. In continuing Hollywood fuckery news, uh, over at the old DreamWorks, which just had also massive layoffs and restructuring in their uh -huh. animation department, good old Jeffrey Katzenberg, known as the coolest and chillest guy in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Uh, said, hey, AI is gonna eliminate 90% of artist jobs on animated films, and we're gonna be able to make more money and more animated films than ever because we're just gonna be able to get rid of artists. It's gonna be so cool when we get rid of the artists. Okay. The Quibi man says that it'll be cool to spend less on art and spend less time on art. The Quibi man says so. Oh yeah? Yeah, the Quibi man says, you know what would be neat? Uh-huh. If if just if we could find ways to spend less and less on art and it will always work, says the Quibi man. Yeah, Mr. Quibi himself. Mm -hmm. Stephen Quibi. Um okay. So okay. let's let's talk about this. There are two levels to this. There is the the grand evil of it all, right? That we all know. We all agree on that. There's mm -hmm. no like is this good or bad? Obviously this is bad and yeah. we all agree that. But then there's also the PR marketing side of this where I'm just like, 
how are rich people continually so dumb that they keep saying the quiet part out loud? So even like, I know, I know that rich people are evil, right? Like we, we, we eat the rich, right? So we know that they want to harm people. Mm-hmm. We know that they don't care. We know that they're not worried about livelihoods of others. All of that aside, all of that in our hearts and our minds, why would you say it? Why he's would you not, fucking say it? Because he's not speaking to us. He's speaking to other rich people and but, other people that dabble in the stock market. They're talking to the- to But do like you think that'll the, help? The boomers with the 401ks that are like, oh, I should shift a little bit of my stock money mm-hmm. into the into the DreamWorks and I'll get, do I think that'll help? Do you yeah. think it'll make stock prices rise for I think, DreamWorks? I think so. I think everything they say is set, is set to make stock prices rise. I think it's either set to make stock prices rise or mm-hmm. they're about to go into negotiations with some other group of people immediately yeah. that they want to let know they are replaceable. Maybe that's it. It's one of those two things. I don't really know how to track stock prices. I I tried. I Googled it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Google, tell me about stocks. It didn't work. Um, <laughs> I was just trying to be like, did it get better or worse? I don't know. Are these things live updated on Google? What, uh, I get all my stock news from a, from a two minute financial show on Quibi. Ah, good, good, good. Sometimes um, while I'm doing things, Windows in the bottom right corner will let me know there's a stock thing happening. And I'm like, so? Yeah. <laughs> I think any headline that has to do with AI is the mm-hmm. same as, as headlines about NFTs from two years ago. It's They don't really think they're going to make money. They're just like, this is the buzzword in the financial world. We're yeah. on it. Will you please just know that we're on it and continue uh, buying our stock and line go up? I know, but saying like, we're gonna integrate so much AI versus 90% of artist jobs. Like, why say that? That's the part that just fucking baffles me. Well, he's also and not just like, cool- AI is gonna be so good for everyone. Like, at least make yourself look like the good guy. If you're gonna fucking come out and you're gonna lie and you're gonna bullshit, mm-hmm. make yourself the good guy. Imagine, okay? For me, if you will. Yeah. I'm Jeffrey Quibby, mm-hmm. okay? I come out and I say, AI is an incredible technology. Yeah. We're gonna use so much AI to further what we're doing. We're gonna be able to make more content than ever. It's gonna help artists. Everyone's gonna be happy with it. Mm-hmm. You still used the AI buzzwords. Yeah. You still lied, but like, it's just, it is It is a sickness. It is that wealth is a sickness. Yeah. That's all it is to me. It's beyond, we said this so our stock prices would go up. And maybe it's that like genuinely there is such a sickness and so many evil wealthy people that it's like, oh, hearing about artists being fired actually makes me more confident in them. Well, Jeffrey- Actually makes me think there is more money. Well, Jeffrey Quibby is also known as I said, like the coolest, chillest guy in Hollywood. Yeah. He's he's real chill. You, you have to- um, mm-hmm. You have to be a pretty cool, chill guy to get into a public feud with Robin Williams. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like only the yeah. coolest and chillest guy made, would would make Robin Williams literally scream and yell in public. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, I have to agree. Nathan Dooley said capitalism is a sickness. That's it. That's why it just can't make sense. It, it can't. There's mm-hmm. no making it make sense. It's just a sickness. Yeah. I mean, in, in his mind, getting rid of the people is good because they'll go find something else. People find something else. It's one banana, Michael. How much could it cost? How much could a banana cost? You know? Um, but anyway, so these are the Hollywood fuckeries that continue going on. And mm-hmm. and that's why it's important that unions are strong and yeah. unions do strike when they need to. Uh, which next year, I believe the animation contract is up and uh, IATSE too, right? Oh, well that explains why we're talking about AI this year then, especially yeah. right after the actors strike. Yeah. Oh, the actors got a lot of money because the actors found out they were irreplaceable. Oh, by the way, animators, 90% of you will be out of a job and I'm being conservative. Alex, will you fact check me on when uh, the uh, next ones are up? I know IATSE is going next year. Yeah. And then I think it was the animation contract. Well, We managed I know, to dodge the strike on the video game contract. Yeah, because I know animators were like, on the picket lines and they were like, hey, remember this when we when exactly. we have our contracts. So that's the same thing. Uh, obviously there was also an IATSE strike. Um, didn't IATSE strike on their last deal? IATSE will strike every time. Yeah. That's yeah, what's yeah, great yeah. about IATSE. Yeah. 
Ayatsi um, will just was. be like. So uh, in checking, Ayatsi mm-hmm. is up in 2024, okay. I believe. Next year. Uh, and the American Federation of Musicians is also coming up soon, mm-hmm. which is cool. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Chain, and animation. Uh, Chain Mall in the live studio audience, first time chatter says, um, animation guild member here, 80% of us are already out of work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. It sucks in animation right now. And that, yeah. and that is such a bummer. It's the worst. And so to hear Jeffrey Katzenberg come up and be like, and another 90% of you yeah. can absolutely get fucked. Get out of here. Get out of here. The, here's, but here's the other thing. When they say things like AI is going to do 90% of animation do you, and we're not going to need 90% of the animators we have anymore. Do you remember when they said that about 3D? Yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, once 3D happens, we uh-huh. won't need any artists anymore. No. The, the computer will do all the work. Yeah, CGI, baby. Have you ever seen the number of people it takes <laughs> to do 3D animation? <laughs> That's wild. It's wild that they would say that. It's bad. It's silly. Yeah. And again, I just do think that like, exorbitant wealth is just a sickness. It really does contaminate the mind in a way that seems irreparable. Listen, there's a reason they started to add mid-credit and end-credit scenes in movies. Yeah. People weren't sitting for those credits. They're 87 no. minutes long on right. an animated film. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Wild. Hey, hey, yeah. hey. Are you kidding me? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, T. Birney said VFX and IATSE striking would again bring everything to a screeching halt. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So VFX currently is doesn't have a lot of unionized members, but they are working on unionizing. And right now it's like kind of small sectors gathering together to form unions. Yeah. That's the um, toughest thing right now is that the VFX, VFX artists, none of them are union in any part of the industry. They're slowly forming unions. Though. Yeah. It is in progress, uh, but there isn't really a carved out space for VFX workers and unions right now. So they're mm-hmm. working on that. Um, IATSE on the other hand, like Anthony said, strikes every time. Yeah. If you heard about, <laughs> uh, we talked a little bit about a VFX walkout um, uh, a couple of weeks back. That walkout was for onset VFX. Yes. Uh, so, you know, there are digital people and practical effects people that mm-hmm. are on set on movies all the time. Yeah. Those are the people that walked. Uh, mm-hmm. The people that are in the offices being made to sleep under their cubicles all night to render a man's a man's costume. Yeah. Uh, they are not union, unfortunately. Uh, but specifically the Marvel VFX workers were working on organizing a union. They are, yeah. Um, so that's exciting to hear. Um, Kia said, uh, general strike, waiting for it. <sighs> Truly. Let me tell you something. If I had a job, I'd be right there. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a job, I'd strike with everyone. Yeah. I own my job, so I don't oh, yeah. know. Yeah. I'll that walk works. out on you if we do a general strike. That's fair. I would support you. Thanks. And Dagger, I don't know if you would be walking out or if you would have to lend the support. I don't really understand what your title is or what your ownership is Dagger in the company. Would, Dagger would be chomping a cigar telling us all to get back to work. Okay, well. <laughs> Look, I. He's not, listen, he's very adorable. He's, I can't tell him no. He's like. <laughs> I can't tell him no. I know. I don't understand what our power structure is here. I don't know if I'm bo- his boss or he's mine. Power structure is give boy what he want. Yeah. That's power structure yeah. here in the office. Um. Yeah, uh, C.D. and Dina said, yeah, but you would be the first uh, to get a union in the Sage. Well, it's very interesting. We're a very small business and we don't qualify for any unions. Um, we would love to be union. That would be great. There yeah. just isn't really um, a functional way for businesses of our size to be. Anyways, that's the the technicality. Yeah, of it, it, would be, it would be you and Kaylee deciding to unionize it just in case one of you makes a decision the other one doesn't like. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I guess. The Pixel I'm Circus even, Union? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> what would that be? I had a call with my lawyer yesterday and he said, so how does this work? And we were like, man, I don't know. And he was like, okay, well, y- y- you have to like pay yourself. And I was like, man, I don't know about that. Yeah, it, you know how it works is two best friends and we're having a good time, having a good time, having a good time. Two best friends and we're having a good time, having a good time, having a good time. <laughs> and you can take that to your accountant. Yeah. 
when your accountant asks you, when yeah. your lawyer asks you, when yeah. the government asks you what is going on in this shadowy building yeah. in the middle of Los Angeles. <laughs> in this shadowy building. You can go, two, two best, best friends, friends and we're having a good time. Having a good time. Having a good time. Two best friends. <laughs> So I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we're very pro union. Um, that's cool and all. And like one day when there is an actual designated, uh, cause right now a lot of, a lot of the studios that you see that are in union are in like doing SAG after productions. Mm -hmm. um, that is kind of like the only option right now for digital content studios, but it is not an option for digital content studios of our size. Right. Uh, I think that like, the only studio in tabletop that I know to be union is Dropout. Yeah, that makes sense. That think, makes sense. Cause I think that's it. Listen, if Sam if if Sam Reich that's didn't, all I can name if Sam least. Reich didn't unionize, it would be real bad at Thanksgiving. Well, and because for him. yeah, right. <laughs> but also because they come from like doing sketch comedy and they've done deals yeah, with TV yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Well, whereas, like that of, yeah. makes sense from like the college humor background mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of their performers do other stuff that requires them to be union. Yeah, they they were more of an SNL before yeah. they were you know known for tabletop. Exactly, and, stuff like and that. if you want to bring in your friends who are trying to do TV mm -hmm. and trying to do sketch comedy and sitcoms and writing yeah. on shows. You can't just have them come in to do an episode of your show if it isn't union. It's tough. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's well, you can okay. do it, but it's tough. And here's the thing: so digital is a gray area in general, mm -hmm. and also uh, appearances as self. So like, mm -hmm. it's too early does not qualify to be SAG. Yeah, because we are appearing as self and not as named characters. Fun fact. But I'm playing. I'm playing the, the character Anthony Carboni. Carboni. Yeah. The real, the real Anthony Carboni, different guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would <laughs> never things, see these, say these ridiculous things. Do things different. He would never say these ridiculous things no. that he say on the show. Organized man, very normal. Yeah. Very normal. Listen, off camera, we're normal. Completely. We're very normal now. Yeah, totally normal. You think you think we're not normal? We're very normal now. Uh, yeah. We're very normal now. Um. Let's talk about other things. Let's talk about other things. Now that now that Hollywood's back, Sage. Can we watch the Avatar The Last Airbender trailer? Yeah. Muted. Ah. <laughs> I just heard the funniest things from the tech booth. I heard, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I was oh. like, did something break or are we just excited about Avatar? Oh, oh nice. We got, big, we got a big donation. Hey, thank you very much. Very Ooh. kind of you. <laughs> I just heard shit, and I was like, good shit, bad shit? What are we doing? What are we doing here? What's going on here? What are we doing here? Oh, that's very, very funny. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, let's watch it. Bring it, we wanna bring it up on one of ours? Um, sure, let's yeah. Let's bring it up on one of ours. Well, I wanna watch it on mute anyways. Yes, so, so let's bring it up on one of ours. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'll do it. I'm playing it on my screen. Okay. Um, okay. So, you know, they've just been waiting to drop this trailer. Uh, mm -hmm. We got the poster that we talked about on Wednesday. <sighs> Anthony, you've watched it already, right? Mm -mm. You, ha <gasps> you haven't seen it and you're watching it for the first time on mute? Mm -hmm. I just really don't want us to get a copyright strike and I know that we will for this yeah. one. There's like absolutely no chance. Sometimes we win on them, but sometimes we don't. Maybe I can get a little bit of volume. Like maybe a tiny bit. I don't know if that's coming through or not. I apologize if it isn't. Okay. Whoa, that looks good. That was, that was positive. I know. Oh, he's, he's gonna be such a good Iroh. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God. Oh. Whoa. Oh, they look great. The Kyoshi Warriors look incredible. Yeah. Ang looks perfect. I love, the, that kid's got such strong brows and I love it. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes, right? Wow. Oh. There's our boy. Show his face, cowards. They will. Yeah. Momo looks a little freaky. Momo looks a little freaky. They do show his face, we might have missed it. I swear. Dang. 
February 22nd, everybody. Wow. February 22nd. That looks good. But he like, earlier in the does it look better than Shyamalan show. good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, does it really does it really look better than Shyamalan good? Um, like, does it really? <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just a photo of him. Because I was like, I remember I've seen a photo of his face. Yeah. That trailer was incredible. That's a great trailer. That's a perfect trailer. Uh, look. Avatar The Last Airbender is probably my favorite series of all time. It is probably the thing that like means the most in my heart and is the easiest to like fuck up for me. Um, because Over Buffy? I think so. Whoa. And I mean, they're very, they're very much up there, but I think Avatar might be my favorite of all time. It's like, it's also just one of those where like, it's a perfect franchise. Yeah. And there are so many caveats that I have to have to loving Buffy that is like, Yes. Moral caveats, things like that. Yeah. They're just, that, that bring you down a little bit. Yeah, you don't want to think too much about what's behind the curtain on Buffy. Exactly. It's yeah. like the fuck you to Joss Whedon. It's the seasons that are questionable. It's some of the content that's questionable. Mm -hmm. I think Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra are both perfect. Yeah. They are They are my perfect children. Um, so with that in mind, although I've been extremely excited about this, I've also been very fucking nervous. Uh, the casting news was very reassuring. That all seemed really, really great. Everyone looks exceptional. All the costuming looks beautiful and so detailed and wonderful they and look realistic. Perfect. Um, all of the actors just like embody these characters. And it's and it's tough when it's characters you've grown up with, where you're like, this is so specific in my brain. It's so burned into my brain that like Avatar came out when I think I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. And like I grew up with Avatar The Last Airbender. So to see these actors and be able to be like, yes, that 100 percent is Katara, and that's Aang feels so Good. I believe it's pronounced Ong. You stop that right now. <laughs> you stop that right now. It looks uh, amazing. Fire Lord Ozai looks incredible. Yeah, we got, I mean, we've got Daniel Day Kim as yeah. Fire Lord Ozai, which yeah. like, whew. Yeah. Whew. War criminal Uncle Iroh looks incredible. They, everybody looks perfect. Uh, and most importantly, like, uh, above and beyond that, Everything looks good. The locations look good. Phenomenal. The the way they chose to uh, represent the visuals of like the bending, yeah, looks very good. Oh my god, we only saw a little bit of like action and like fighting, mm -hmm. uh, but the like fire kick that we uh, saw looked phenomenal. Like it made Zuko look so cool, and Zuko should look so cool. <laughs> I'm just, I am genuinely ecstatic. Uh, people said, was there an issue with the Sokka actor or something? So uh, there was talk about this in the Discord last night. Um, there was a thing around the Sokka actor. And okay. originally it had seemed like he had lied about being um, part of an indigenous tribe. Oh. That was the original thing that it seemed like. Okay. Uh, what it turned out to be, um, according to research, is that he is part of an unregistered tribe. Oh, okay which is a very different scenario than lying about being indigenous, for instance, no, or being, you know, part that, of a specific tribe. That usually means um, you are, you have been so oppressed and you are such a small uh, mm. population that the government refuses to even give you the tiny protections <laughs> that right. you would get. So uh, <laughs> with that in mind, and I don't want to speak uneducated on that, but that is the information that comes up, but that does change everything. And it is a really big difference. And it uh -huh. does disappoint me very much because the narrative did stop there. It's the thing that we know about how news works where everybody stops at the first headline. And then yeah. when the correction comes out, nobody reads it. Right. Uh, which is very disappointing. So it was incredibly irresponsible of the many, many, many publications that ran with that story first uh, that potentially completely defamed and could have potentially ruined this like 16 year old boy's career. Yeah. I think he, he which, maybe he's like 19. Which I don't would know. be absolutely, I mean, that would be absolutely wild mm -hmm. to be an indigenous person yeah. and then have your career and have like. Yeah. Your upended. entire reputation upended because mm -hmm. you you weren't in. I mean, we see this a lot with marginalized populations. You weren't uh -huh. indigenous enough. You weren't indigenous in the right way. Right. And that's what the headlines say. It wasn't in the way that we understand it yeah. or whatever it is. Um, so that is a huge bummer. Um, but thank. I mean, it sounds like that has blown over and been corrected, even though it hasn't gotten as much publicity. But I'm I've glad it's sort of nothing like nothing about it. I've seen like nothing correcting it. No, and sometimes with PR, and this sucks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with PR, all we all you can hope for is 
It Nobody's mentioning the bad thing anymore. I, but every time I've talked about it, every time I talk about the live action, someone's like, even with the thing about the Sokka actor. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. Every time. Like, I mean, even think about it here. We were just celebrating the trailer and this is no shade to you because this is how the news cycle works and not the person who asked. So I want to be very clear. This is not any shade to you. But as soon as we talked about the trailer, we immediately have somebody, we only have, you know, 200 and some odd people here. Yeah. And instantly had at least one person being like, well, but wasn't there something with the Sokka actor? Ugh, well, that's a bummer. Right? I hope I hope that gets kind of pushed. I mean, listen, if, yeah. this, is the, if this is the pushback that mm -hmm. the show is getting, yeah. I'm sure somebody at Netflix, and yeah. it would behoove the Netflix PR department, whoever's working over in Geeked or NX or whatever they're calling that department now, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're working on a press tour now that the strike is over. Yeah. Where they're going to give, where they're going to give that actor a lot of opportunity. They're gonna make sure that that actor gets to publicize this a lot. Yeah. Because you don't want that going into the, going into the airing of your show. That's no. supposed to be like your big show for the year. Exactly. So. Uh, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, they essentially accused him of lying about his ethnicity uh, by saying that he was part of a chair that he was of Cherokee heritage, uh, and then they just realized that he was not in one of the. I think it's only like three recognized Cherokee tribes. Okay. Um. So it's like everything that comes up. So for instance, all I googled was Sokka actor live action. First article, right? Ugh. And these are from January 2022. Um, and there's so much, everything, everything is that. That's a bummer. Yeah. It's a huge bummer, they, especially for this like big breakout. Yeah. I role. hope they're working. I hope they're working on that. Um, cause that yeah. would, that would be horrible, but you know, um, what's you know, what's not horrible is our, is our favorite guy, Paul as uncle Iroh. Yeah. Our favorite war criminal, uncle Iroh. Our favorite war criminal, uncle Iroh. Yeah. Look at this man. Look at his kind eyes. Yeah. I love him in everything. Perfect. Paul's the best. It's going to be amazing. Um, Quasi was ask, asking, is this only for book one? I'm very curious to see how far the movie goes or if the plan is to do three movies um, because it would be very confident to come out thinking, hey, we're gonna get three movies or there could already be a deal signed with it to mm -hmm. do. I mean, it's a series, not a movie series. Yeah. Um, so uh, three like seasons of it rather. Um, so I'm very curious to see. It's possible they've already signed a deal for three seasons and that's why they're so confident. It would be very difficult to pack three seasons of a show into one live action season. But yeah. we haven't seen anything about Toph, for instance. Uh, we haven't seen some of the characters that pop up in later seasons. Mm -hmm. But we did see, and I guess I would have to go back because right now a little bit of the three seasons kind of blend together in my brain. But what we do see is a little more of the Kyoshi Warriors and the evolution with Suki than I remember happening in just season one, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah. Can anybody, I any of my fellow Avatar friends in the chat, is uh, the relation, well, cause we only I, see their first interaction. Never right. mind. Cause it looks like we're seeing the relationship between Sokka <laughs> and Suki and this matters, Anthony. No, I know, I'm just. <laughs> I know, I'm going I'm back and like, forth. I'm going no, back and forth. I'm, I'm throwing like, it in my mind it's, live. It's, we're doing it live. Uh, I, I, it would, it, it would not be, mm -hmm. uh, it, it would be weird if they were doing it exactly the way they did the animated series, right? We can say that. No, it would be, be they, it would perfect to, no. they would want to, they would want to perhaps tell the story, like not tell a different story, but change some pacing or change introduction of people when they happen, when they, you know, uh, highlight things that weren't, hi that weren't mm -hmm. highlighted before maybe to, you know, go deeper yeah. into some stuff. So we don't know what the structure is going to be. Um, a lot of people are saying that uh, they're going back and forth on the Azula of it all. Mm. Um, I believe Azula is in one episode of season one. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. She's, um, I mean, we don't know who appears in what. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the IMDB right now. Uh, and it, you know, all the main cast are credited for all 10 episodes, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they appear in all 10 yes, episodes. Absolutely. There's no way Azula's in all 10 episodes. Yeah. There There's absolutely some, no chance. There are some characters that are only listed for three episodes, two mm -hmm. episodes. But once again, that can also change. It's also just IMDB and sometimes things yeah. are just put up wrong. Uh, is Suki listed for all 10 episodes? Do you do you want to know? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. That but, can't be correct. Suki and Azula being listed for all 10 episodes it, there's, is impossible. Yeah, and that's the thing is it, we, we see this a lot when we're when we're watching the mm -hmm. uh, like the Star Wars stuff or the Marvel stuff too, yeah. where it's like they're going to hide some people. Mm -hmm. They're going to say some people are bigger than they are. Yeah. And they're going to change that as the actual episodes come out. I watched that trailer five times yesterday. Yeah. I watched it five great times trailer. yesterday. I just kept starting it over and watching it again. I want to watch it again right now. I'm so incredibly excited. Um, for those who have not watched The Legend of Korra, go watch The Legend of Korra. I don't care. Don't give me any reasons or excuses. Go watch The Legend of Korra. If you enjoyed Avatar The Last Airbender, go watch The Legend of Korra. It's an incredible mm -hmm. series. There are times, and I'm not going to say overall, but there are times when it is a better series. Watch it. Um, yeah, so watch February it. 22nd. Mm -hmm. February 22nd. Um, a bunch of other trailers and stuff were all just coming out willy-nilly yesterday. Yeah, they were. But, you know, that was that was the big one. Avatar is all that matters <laughs> that to me in my heart one. right now. Truly and honestly, that's all I care about. I'm sorry. Um, but we had yeah. the Ghostbusters trailer. We did have a Ghostbusters trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it looked good. We talked about it with a guy at a Starbucks for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it came out while we were doing the show yeah. on Wednesday. Uh, and listen, if you want, if you want like a reaction to the Ghostbusters trailer, go, go to kind of funny that you're not going to find that level of excitement that you just had for Avatar. Mm -hmm. Go watch Greg Miller, watch a Ghostbusters trailer. Yeah. I, I say do that. Um, there's some definitely, there's, there's some fun stuff in there. Uh, and I think it's, I, it looks pretty solid. It looks pretty solid. Yeah. I enjoyed the last Ghostbusters series a lot. So I'm into it. Uh, that sounds good. I thought the last Ghostbusters was Pretty okay. I liked it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. And uh, honestly, until until right. the end. Right. Uh, I think all of the kids were phenomenal in it and all of the adults were incredibly mediocre in it, um, which is unfortunate. Um, Anthony, I'm in, just watching the Avatar trailer again. I'm sorry. In other big news, uh, I guess this is big Hollywood news. Let's talk about this while we're talking about Hollywood. Oh? What are you doing, Jared Leto? Is this big Hollywood news? No. He wants it to be. He wishes it would be. Jared Leto wishes it was big Hollywood news. Jared Leto, what are you doing? Jared Leto uh, apparently climbed some of the Empire State Building uh, to promote uh, his band's new tour. He didn't climb the whole Empire State Building. He climbed uh, a few stories of it with a bunch of safety gear and a camera crew and harnesses and all kinds of stuff. Uh, in a publicity stunt for his band. Uh, the top comment on Reddit, by the way, on this was hilarious. It's like, he heard there was a teenage girl up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cherlo, what are you doing, man? And like, the interview with him afterwards is like the most Jared Leto thing in the world. Like, he did this thing. He did this thing to get attention and publicity. Obviously. Right? And then afterwards he was doing the interview and he tried to do it in that way that Jared Leto has where he's like, I didn't do anything for attention. I showed up to the Met Gala in a cat costume. I didn't, I'm not looking for attention. Like when I won't, I'm not, attention me, Jared Leto. I'm just, I'm just inviting 200 people to an island to worship me. I don't need attention. I'm just Jared Leto. He said, I was more excited than nervous to tell you the truth, but I have to be honest, it was very, very hard. The endurance that it took, the stamina that it took. <laughs> I hate this man so much. Uh, and then he also apparently climbed some hotel in Berlin. Who cares? And people who gives and, a shit. And the press was like, "What are you gonna? Where where are you gonna climb next?" And he's like, "Into bed. I'm gonna climb right into bed." Okay, fellas, gotta go. <laughs> it wasn't much. I was just climbing the Empire State Building. I didn't want any attention for it or anything. I just, it's the Empire State Building. Did you get the crane shot? Did you get the helicopter shot of me, the, the drone shot? Did you get that? that bed into space. <laughs> what are you, like, what are you doing, man? I hate this man so much. Sherlock, what are you doing? <laughs> Hold on. Dr. Mighty Marvel yeah. just said, I was at that island. Hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm sorry. Are you fucking with us? Go on. Please elaborate. Were you at that island? Was it a coincidence? For that event? For, did you go? Were you part of the, the Leto cult? 
Were you embedded? Were you an embedded reporter in the Leto cult? Please tell us everything. Please I just tell us everything. I don't know. I, I don't know. I I hate Jared Leto and um sure. I just don't understand why anyone keeps looking at him. Like what if we all just closed our eyes every time Jared Leto came up? Do you, you think he would you, die like Tinkerbell? <sighs> Or would, while our eyes were closed, would he creep ever closer? Oh, uh, you know what? You're right. Women, don't close your eyes. You don't Never want to close Never your close eyes. Never close your eyes around Jared Leto. You don't want to close uh, your eyes. You can close your eyes around Jared Leto. Yes. I cannot. Um, weird, sto- weird, weird story. Producer Daggers met Jared Leto. Why? Producer Dagger met Jared Leto and hung out with Jared Leto a little bit. And now I want to give him a bath. Right? <laughs> this is from Dagger's uh, previous career at Instagram. Before Dagger, listen, Dagger was a high powered tech executive before he was an executive mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to, he's trying to reform himself. He doesn't hang out with the old crowd anymore. You know? I don't feel good about it. I don't feel good about it. No, you shouldn't. That wasn't on his work history. <laughs> he didn't he say he had hung out with Jared Leto no. when he applied for the job. No, he, he keeps that quiet. <sighs> he keeps saying, you should have seen the way he was looking at me when I said that. If you notice that my eye, that my, and my eyes were down like this, it was because Dagger was literally standing here as I was telling that yeah, story. Yeah, he was. Um, let's talk about other absolutely foolish uses of money. Sure. The Las Vegas Sphere. $2.4 billion. The roundest screen you've ever seen in your life. Wow. One on the outside, one on the inside. You go inside, it's projected all around you. I think it's neat, it's very expensive. I think, I think it's, it's neat. I don't think it's neat. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. I think it is pointless. I think it is absolutely just, I think it's dumb. Okay. I don't I don't see any appeal to it. I look at it and it, it angers me. It angers me to see photos of it, videos of it, seeing it in person when I was there for TwitchCon. Right. I just look at you it have, and you I'm just like- You haven't told me, what was your experience of seeing the sphere in, in real person? Like, what was it? What- Tell me everything about Sphere in real life. I could see it out of a window yeah. from a hotel. How big was it from your window? Did it take up much space or was it like just off and like, was it like looking at the Hollywood sign from like your friend's apartment where it's like, oh yeah, it's up over there no, somewhere. No, it's bigger than that for sure. Like yeah. it's pretty big. It's like the size of a- That's a relatable thing for you also. You understand scale, right? When I say seeing the Hollywood <laughs> sign from, from your, your friend's, friend's apartment. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it was like, you know, it was like the size of looking at a regular stadium. Yeah. Like it just looked like the size of a, you know, stadium. Okay. okay. Stadium size. Um, and how far away from it were you? I don't know, man. Like pretty far. Nothing's that far in Vegas. Yeah. But it wasn't like you were opening your window and there was like the giant Xbox no, logo. There was a good amount of the air. things between us. Yeah. Um, and truly it was not anything. <laughs> Like it had no effect on me. It didn't look special. Yeah. Uh, the last time I was in Vegas was back in April for mm-hmm. NAB and it was already built, but it yeah. was not on yet. Um, and I was staying closer to it then because I was at Resort World and I was like, what's that big dumb dome? I mean, that's like, the that, thing. What's that pointless, giant, ugly dome? And now it's a ugly light up dome. Look, you could see the Great Wall of China from space, but it's not that impressive. You gotta get closer. You gotta get right up. You gotta get your dome against that dome. I was you gotta go dome underwhelmed. To dome. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to. Uh, the reason we're talking about the dome today is not just because it is the new U2 factory of mediocre visuals. It's because the CFO quit over a $98.4 million loss just so far. Yep, uh, first quarter operating, uh, they made, they lost uh, 98.4 million against operating costs. Whoopsies. Do you know what I heard? Do you know what I, I did not realize until I read that article? What, Anthony? The U2 residency at the Sphere, two shows. Hmm? The residency was like two shows. They, all played, they, did? they played two weekends. They called it, the Sphere people called it like a U2 residency at the Sphere. Yeah. They played like two Fridays in a row or something. <laughs> it's almost like building something in a struggling economy of people whose wages are not keeping up with exorbitant rises of inflation and housing costing and cost of living, where each ticket has to cost around $1,000 to attend simply a concert for a band that's 
been well washed up for many years, mm -hmm. isn't a sustainable business model. Well, they also show a, 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 a $100 Darren Aronofsky movie. Much more sustainable, yes. $100 to go to the movies. In this economy? In this economy? But Sage, can I, can I remind you of something? Mm -hmm. Movie round. One bedroom apartments in Los Angeles are $2,000 a month. No, no one is paying $1,000 for a ticket. That's Sage. not sustainable. You might get that first batch of people that do, but that is not a sustainable business model because a business model means it needs to be able to be done continually by consumers. Sage, sure, that's mm -hmm. how much apartment cost. Apartment, not round. Apartment, rectangle. Usually. What are you not understanding about sphere and money? Listen, maybe they lost a hundred million dollars. <laughs> maybe they lost a hundred million dollars. Yeah, but what am I not getting? Yeah, maybe they lost a hundred million dollars, but baby, you got In just their first quarter, and that's not about setup costs, that's about operational costs, to you, be clear. You gotta spend money to make money, mm -hmm. and that goes double when it's round. Okay, round, so double. Round, okay, so double, double. round double shape. Okay. So double, Anthony. Yeah, now, round. Would you pay $50 to see a movie? Is it round? No, because it's double for round, 100 for round. No, no, no. So doubled no, no, means, no, 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 no. means half is 50. $50 no, spend, movie ticket? Spend money, I mean. You spend double because round. That's operating cost. That's not retail price of movie. You're getting deal on movie if it's $100. What? <laughs> <laughs> movie $100. Right? No. So if you pay $100 to see movie, retail cost of movie for Sphere, 25. What? And then they make $75. It's like you don't know business of round. <laughs> I think I'm having a stroke. You have to um, lose money to make money. You get one Darren Aronofsky movie, you uh -huh. spend a lot of money on it. Yeah. Oh no, we yeah. lost a lot of money. No. That's business mindset. We're grinding. Sigma now. Here's what we do. Two more movie uh -huh. by older, whiter director next quarter. Is there such thing? <laughs> sure. Who's who's whiter? Than Aronofsky? Yeah. Cur you can find older. Currently, I'd but say- find older and whiter. Currently, I'd say Wes Anderson and Ari Aster, but I don't know if they're older. Not older. They're just whiter. Not older. <laughs> I think Wes Anderson may be older. Maybe. I think Wes Anderson may be older. Imagine Wes Anderson movie, Browned. I do, I do enjoy the occasional Wes Anderson film, but I don't want to spend $100 All around on you? It. I don't want to spend $100 on it. But here's the thing, because the main thing is not the $100 movies. That's their little extra. It's the $1,000 concert tickets yeah. for them to put up stock visuals that look like they were made in someone's first semester on Blender. They literally did melty clocks and butterflies, they dog. Did, they did the melty clocks and butterflies. And I saw that and I laughed so hard. Have you ever been to a concert where somebody, where they don't throw in the stock footage of the melty clocks they and can't. the butterflies? They can't, they won't. They can't, they won't refrain. They can't, they won't refrain. Uh, I think, I think I told you this. I, it might've been off camera that I told you this. I, I knew people that went yeah. and they had like, one of the one of the visuals was like an ever expanding out through infinity Elvis church. Shut up. Like a big neon church of Elvis that Everyone kept appearing. <laughs> Everyone shut up. <laughs> Rich people, shut up. I think that, I, I will tell you this, as somebody who loves this kind you of too. technology and not just not just in the sphere, but like, you know, when I go and see like those those special things that are projected on domes at science centers and things, like I just love that kind of stuff. Yeah. I am always bummed at how non-creative the visuals are. Yes. Everything from like a laser light show at the planetarium to like the biggest, most expensive, expensive concert you'll ever go to, the yeah. visuals are always melty clocks, butterflies turning into bombs. Yep. You know, just yeah. just real blacklight poster shit. Yeah. Just real blacklight poster college dorm room shit. The other day I saw somebody at a restaurant who was wearing a shirt that said coexist, but the letters were all made out of guns. Oh no, that took a swerve. Uh -huh. 
I was like, I was like, oh, the coexistence. Yeah, yeah, no, the co oh, oh no! The, all of the letters were made out of uh, amalgamations of guns, of multiple guns per letter. What do you think they were trying to say? I pondered, Anthony. What do you think they were trying to say? But that's the same energy as you two's visuals at the sphere to me. The boy is looking at us and saying, he is hey, staring. He's in an investment club with Bono and he doesn't like it when we he talk about it. He does not like it. He doesn't it. like it. Can I just say something? Dagger sits on the board of Product Red. Can I say something <laughs> controversial? <laughs> sure. It's going back to a thing from a moment ago. I don't give a shit about Elvis. I don't like Elvis. Oh no, that's fine. I don't, I don't I, like Elvis. And here's the thing. I don't think that's controversial with anybody under 60. I don't like Elvis. You don't have to like Elvis. The Elvis now, like if you like Elvis now and you're any sort of like younger person, mm -hmm. you like it as like a weird American icon symbol thing that is no longer about Elvis. Mm -hmm. It's like the Marilyn Monroe thing and the, you know, just there are certain people yeah. that, that just aren't people anymore. They're just iconography. Yeah. And I, I, it's okay. For some people, Marilyn Monroe has taken that. That's what I'm where saying, like, yeah. she's just the images of her. That's what, yeah, that's um, why I said Marilyn Monroe. But Marilyn yeah. Monroe didn't marry a 14 year old. So it's worth, no. uh, it's worth taking note of. Um, and there's a lot of people who said that they just watched Priscilla uh, and that gave them a little perspective on it. I haven't watched it. I haven't really had an interest in it. I didn't no. watch the last Elvis biopic because no. I don't care about Elvis. No. Um, who was it? Um, I was looking for a specific message. Um, I think it was Quasi who was what, like, what? Um, Elvis was not technically a good person. No. Was not a good person. <laughs> There's no technicality. Yeah. There's no technicality. You don't have to, you don't have to throw the technically on there. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Just, just wasn't a good person. Hey, can we talk about an additional beautiful screen technology? Yeah. Can yeah, we talk we can. about it? Can we get, like, we'll get away from the sphere. This is a great transition, Anthony. Can we talk about another beautiful screen that yeah. costs too much money? Yeah, we can. The Steam Deck OLED is out. I can't believe it. I didn't even, there was no hype leading up to the, this. It was a surprise drop. Like there was nothing. Surprise drop, baby. Um, Unexpected. Yes. I'm once again, and here's where I'm gonna give the same same thought as the PlayStation recently. Making new one, what are people complaining about? It's, is it is it that it's not an OLED screen? Is that the main complaint? Or is it that I could bench press it? No, you couldn't bench press it. No, 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 no. I I you you've tried. <laughs> right. It's you can't you can't you it's need too a too heavy. You definitely need a spotter for I sure. I would need a spot. Um look. I don't think it's about that. I think it's about, they they said that they didn't want to release a new model. They told everybody they are not going to redesign the internals of the Steam Deck yes. for a few years. They you, did say Steam Deck 2 will be coming. It, they but, said it will be coming, but you've got a few years. Yeah. But I think this has to do with just tweaking, making improvements, and technology becoming more available and prices for them going down. Right more than anything else, because in addition to the OLED screen, it also has um, more memory bandwidth, uh -huh. but they're not advertising that. Yeah, they're, there are some upgrades to it. Uh, Digital Foundry did mm -hmm. their tech review of it, and in addition to the OLED screen, it's a slightly larger panel. Mm -hmm. um, it has a larger battery, Yeah, and it has uh, more memory bandwidth than before, and the reason why they're not uh, advertising that or marketing it as faster is because what you're really seeing is like six to seven percent increases in performance, mm -hmm. and they don't want they don't really Ones want that to you say probably that. wouldn't be able to identify while you're playing. Yeah, unless you're literally digital foundry playing with the two frame graphs next to each other. Yeah, um, but I think this is bullshit as somebody who paid for a Steam Deck. But yeah, but <laughs> Steve Gambino in the live studio audience immediately said, it didn't come with an OLED screen? No, it came with actually the weakest part of the Steam Deck as far as people were concerned mm -hmm. was actually the screen. I'm very confused just because I looked up the release dates and the Switch OLED came out in early 2021. Mm -hmm. And the Steam Deck of course released in 2022. Yep. So you had an OLED switch and the Steam Deck came out with an, without an OLED screen. Um, I would imagine that it had something to do with economies of scale and pre-existing contracts with factories. Yeah. Um, Nintendo made more switch lights 
Mm -hmm. Then Steam Decks were made, and this was Valve's first hardware thing. And yeah, you know, they were keeping, they were trying to keep the margins low. I mm -hmm. don't have a problem with the Steam Deck screen as somebody who owns one. Yeah, I bought the cheapest Steam Deck, mm -hmm. and I put a, I put a big fancy drive in it myself. How often do you play it now? Honestly, pretty often. Really? Yeah, what was, is often? Is I it was, like once a week? Is it multiple times a week? A couple it, nights a week. Yeah. Wow. I'll sit in front of the TV if I'm like, you know, just kind of spacing out. Uh huh. Throw some. Maybe like last night, maybe I'll throw some JoJo on. Okay. And as I'm watching JoJo, I'm also playing pseudo regalia. I don't know. Sure, yeah. Um, That's great, but, you're getting a lot of use out of it. Uh, I think the screen was the weakest part. Uh -huh. And I've always said HDR is a bigger deal than resolution. Yeah. I would rather have a 1080 panel with mm -hmm. HDR yeah. than a 4K panel without it. Agreed. Um, and so I think adding this to the Steam Deck mm -hmm. is going to be a huge jump in quality. Yeah. A huge jump in quality. And the other thing is is the Steam Decks are getting cheaper and they're coming with more storage. Mm -hmm. So now the cheapest Steam Deck, which used to be, I got my Steam Deck for the, um, it was 449, 399, I forget. I got the lowest lowest price Steam Deck. I think deck. it was like 399, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, if you look, if you click on the buy, it'll show all the different ones. But I got the cheapest one. Uh, and it came with 64 gigs of internal storage, uh -huh. right? You put the operating system on it and then you use an SD card. I threw uh, an, I threw an SSD in it. Yes. Um, now for the 399, you get a 256 gig SSD. Right, but you still do not get, get the OLED. That is for the LED screen you still or LCD get the, screen. Yeah, you still get the uh, LCD. But now like the 549, 649 models mm -hmm. come with OLED and like 512 and a terabyte. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, so the cheapest you can get for the OLED screen is $550. Which is still more than I would pay for a for a portable thing like that. I know, and less than a terabyte of storage, which again, you can put your own storage into it, that's yeah. fine. Storage isn't a huge deal for me uh, as somebody who feels very comfortable upgrading storage. Yeah. Um, but I can see why it would be for a, a consumer who doesn't want to deal with that, just wants something that's like plug and play ready yeah. to go. Most games will and run games fine off it. now. Yeah, most games will run fine off an, a, 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 an SD card. There are yeah. a few like, there are a few that really need an SSD, yeah. but I, I don't know. The other thing about this right now is compared to once you're getting up into that six hundred dollar range, mm -hmm. which once again I don't, I can't imagine spending that for a handheld anything. Unfortunately, not. Um, but once you're getting up there, you could get one of the newer, more powerful machines that's out, like one of the ones from Logitech. Not Logitech. Was it Logitech? There Logitech did release a handheld, wasn't it? Um, there are a few, there are a few, like the, the ROG, it's this, the Asus, yeah. like the ROG. The G Cloud was the Logitech No, the one. G Cloud is not the one I'm thinking okay. of. That was the bad one. Yeah. Um, but things like the uh, the Asus mm -hmm. and things like the Ioneo and yeah. things like that, once you're getting to that $600, you can mm -hmm. get a much better portable PC now. Yes, oh yeah. So I don't know, but do they come with the OLED? I don't know if they do. It's a 90 Hertz OLED screen too, which is really nice. That is nice. Yeah. But it's not free sync. It's not the variable refresh rate. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I feel pretty much neutral on this. You know, there's mm -hmm. sometimes things come out where I'm like, this is a downright scam. I don't feel that way. Uh, I feel like it's totally fine. If you wanted it, if you didn't get a Steam Deck, if you were like, hey, I had money set aside and I'd like to get a Steam Deck, you might as well get one with an OLED. Um, if you were gonna spend $550 on a Steam Deck though. And like, Three, what was it, 399? Yeah. 399 to 550 is a big jump. It's a huge jump. Like if it was 399 to 499, that's like the kind of standard console gaps, mm -hmm. that like $100 console gap. But an additional $150 is a big console gap. Yeah. Uh, for tiers. Yeah, the screen's nice. It's a little high for me. I don't know. You're you're also, it feels like, yes, you're paying for the screen, mm -hmm. but it also feels like you're paying a little bit of those a little bit of those Apple prices for a hard drive, which yeah. I don't like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. And they definitely, they kept the low one LCD for a reason. Yes. They did not want people buying an OLED screen and then putting their own storage in it for cheaper. Exactly. Um, but I don't know if you haven't, if you if you don't have a Steam Deck and you've been looking into a Steam Deck, this might be, mm -hmm. this might be the time to look into one. Uh, but I would also say that if you're looking to do a, a handheld PC and you don't, really, really, really want one right now. Yeah. Like you don't feel like, God, I'm just, I'm gonna yeah. melt if I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Wait another year. I agree. I agree with that. Wait another year, see what happens. I, do we wanna talk about more gamer? Can we move on to a big piece of internet news? 
You want to hit that last piece of gaming news first? Yeah, which one do you want? What do you want to talk about? Wow, you said we talk about Modern Warfare, so we got to talk about Modern yeah, Warfare. Yeah, that's true. We got to talk about Modern Warfare. Okay. Um, the, modern, the Modern Warfare 3, we talked about this a little bit earlier in the week. Do be getting the bad reviews. People hate it. It do be bad, according to people. And then everybody has to wonder, why is it so bad? Why the bad? Why the bad? I normally like the shoot man. Yeah. I, I normally like to, to army up. Uh -huh. You know, that's what they call it. They call it armying up and doing the shoot man. Whoa, oh, you I'm thought, fine. you I'm thought. What is this sweet boy doing? Call HR. Um, why? I tried to show you all the dog and it, I failed. So people are wondering why is Modern Warfare 3, why does it, why does it feel so bad? Even for a modern warfare, uh -huh. even for people who are who have the Call of Duty fatigue, they're like, no, it feels like this one's particularly bad. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, it that, is <laughs> that Modern Warfare Three, uh, its development time was half of what they normally give mm -hmm. to a Call of Duty game. Sledgehammer Games had pitched doing Call of Duty Advanced Warfare Two. That pitch was denied by Activision, and so they had to scramble, go back to the drawing board, and do Modern Warfare 3. Um, another, apparently there was also another Call of Duty game, like an unannounced Call of Duty game or something that got pushed later, mm -hmm. so they also had to like double speed up their efforts. Yeah. And it turns out Modern Warfare 3 was supposed to be DLC for Modern Warfare 2, <laughs> and they turned it into a real game. They just, they, they turned it into a real game. How do they do that, Sage? Well, magic. If something's supposed to be DLC and you want it to be a full game, you just, you just put a little, you put a little magic into yeah, it. You, you just, just believe. You spread it out a little bit. You just believe. Yeah. Uh, and instead of having three years of development time, like mm -hmm. you're supposed to have mm -hmm. for a big game like this, they had one and a half years. Rough. Super rough. Super, super rough. Uh, that's a bummer for the people at Sledgehammer. Yeah. Um, who really wanted to do, apparently, a completely different game. I wonder if any of it is in correlation with the deal going through, if they were trying to rush something through in time for the Microsoft deal. I don't know. It's possible. Um, we have a statement from the studio head of Sledgehammer. Okay. Who says, we're incredibly proud of Modern Warfare 3. Didn't be. <laughs> Uh, both the full game experience at launch and the upcoming year of content on behalf of the extremely talented team across Sledgehammer Games and our partner studios. This has been a labor of love, et cetera, uh, to lead the first ever back-to-back -back sequel in Call of Duty. There's a reason. Mm. There's a reason they don't normally do them back-to-back. -back. Um, uh, further on, he said, like, that's what we've delivered, the first true sequel in franchise history. It's why we added features like Carry Forward for the first time. We're proud to be the team. Basically just being like, hey. Yeah. We worked hard on this and yeah. it's good and we stand by it. Uh, it says, we worked hard to deliver on this vision which has been years in the making. Anything said to the contrary is simply not true. This is our game and we cannot wait to play it online with you. Here's what I will say. I'm not going to doubt that developers, actual developers working on the game did work very hard. Yeah. They were probably put into crunch in a very short timeline to get a game out. Yes, the reports on the crunch have also come out and they are bad. So uh, we're not doubting that the developers worked hard on this, nor blaming even mm -hmm. those developers because those aren't the people that make these decisions. The top level level executives, the top level executives is what the I top, said. The top level. The top level executives top -top are the people that continually impose these restrictions. Um, but what would I know about that? I'm just a baby. <laughs> I, can, I can pay you in blocks. <laughs> That's what the top level executives say. I'm a top level executive. He has free goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> a bonus. <laughs> um, That's your streaming bonus. <laughs> <laughs> so with that in mind, we don't blame individual developers that no. work on the team. Uh, we blame high level executives that uh, make choices that cut corners uh, and impose unfair working conditions on developers that end in bad games and bad treatments of people. Yep. Yep, the developers did their best. Yep. Uh, but unfortunately, they were rushed to release. And look, we got some videos of what it looks like to be rushed to release if you want to see. Oh my God, see. yeah, I want to see. Uh, because Activision is already pulling Call of Duty Warfare 3 maps because of terrible spawns. It turns out there are some maps 
where you just spawn in the same place every time if you're on a particular <laughs> team. Spawn camping, <laughs> easier than ever. Uh, so all of these are just like, man, Modern Warfare 3 spawns go crazy. There's just people just getting, just getting- Just stacked. Just straight murdered. God, and then just somebody just sitting there knocking down three people spawning at the same time. <laughs> Freaking wild. And there are tons of clips of this on X, formerly known as Twitter.com. Oh my God. This is so funny. They just all, listen, if <laughs> that corner is cursed, you don't want to spawn near the truck. If you spawn near the truck, <laughs> it's fucked. over for you. It feels like playing those training maps when you get a new shooter where you're playing against bots. Yes. And they want to make it really easy and make it feel very satisfying for you. <laughs> My dude here trapped in that spawn. <laughs> God, that's so funny. Just trying to shoot his way out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's rough. Oh, it's rough. A gay elephant called it modern warfare fui. <laughs> it's in, it's just modern warfare fui. Um, Alex, I don't know if you're showing this one that's on my screen, but it's, it's what it looks like yeah. to be in that camp. Oh, that's, he's rough. just Tough doing POV. his best. He's doing his yeah. best. Tough POV there. Um, so yeah, it does seem like it's launched with a few problems. It has launched with a few problems. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. S sucks to suck. Sucks to suck, honestly, is kind of where I'm at with that. Okay. Anthony. Okay, Sage. We have to talk about a moment of internet history. Oh, my heart's broken here. I have complicated feelings. I have this. very complicated, <laughs> very complicated feelings. feelings on this. Um, We've been talking about the, the the old internet. Yep. We've been talking a lot about it, about the, lost media, about things that are going away, about things that are just kind of relics. And just the feeling of the old internet and mm -hmm. what the old internet was. And one of those, I think, pillars of the feeling of the old internet was mm -hmm. Omegle. Now I understand why you have complicated feelings about Omegle. We all have complicated feelings about Omegle. If Objectively, you're, Omegle's a bad thing. Yes. If you are unfamiliar with Omegle, well then you probably don't see enough videos of Harry Mack or Kermit the Frog on your feed. <laughs> Omegle is a uh, live video service for video chatting where you would be connected one-to-one -one with another stranger. Uh, kind of comparable, honestly, to chat roulette. A mm -hmm. lot of people, like Omegle predates chat roulette. Um, chat roulette got bigger for a while. Yeah. And then when chat roulette went away, Omegle, Omegle stayed. And Omegle's still there. And it's basically like you are just randomly, you turn on your webcam and you're randomly connected to somebody else's webcam from around the world. Yes. And sometimes you get really amazing things from that. It's a rarity. It's, it's a, a big rarity. And when it happens, it always makes Reddit and yeah. everybody talks about it where people have beautiful connections and talk to strangers. I'm telling you, um, Harry Mack, the freestyle, the freestyle rapper mm -hmm. made his entire career. Yes. That one piano player made their entire career yes. out of it. Kermit the Frog mm -hmm. hitting on baddies. Yes. That was huge. However, sometimes and very frequently, you just got um, really, really gross stuff. I would you say- just got men being really, really gross. I would say 30% of the time, uh -huh. it was some pervy dude in some state of undress, in some state of hand hand near crotch. Yep. 30%, which is a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's a lot, a lot. Um, <laughs> and it was very common for like kids and teens and early internet to go on and mm -hmm. it'd be like this, fun little adventurous thing to connect to strangers. Yes. Um, which is not good because kids shouldn't be seeing that. No, no, they should not. And listen, we like, if you're somebody who was a kid during the Omegle thing and you were like, cause I've seen some people say, when we logged on to Omegle, we knew, and that was part of it. Mm -hmm. We knew, and it was part of it was like, oh no, what if like, we're, we're gonna see something creepy or scary, but we are also gonna meet somebody cool. And it's like, okay, that's fine that you were aware of it you were still a child and yep. you're not allowed to decide whether or not you get to see that. Yep. I'm still scarred from some things I saw in early internet video yeah. that nobody nobody should see. Yeah. Nobody should see. No, absolutely not. So with that in mind, there were lots of horrible things happening and it makes sense that in uh, today's age with a better understanding of internet safety, although not a good enough understanding of internet safety, a website like this shouldn't exist. It shouldn't, mm -hmm. um, it should go away. Omegle should not be accessible, especially not to kids. And obviously you have a thing a lot of the time on websites where it's like 
type in your date of birth. Not effective, not effective. Yeah. Um, kids will just lie. It's pretty easy. You just type in a different birth date. That's yeah. it. You change the year. That's all you have to do. Now, there was a very lengthy statement from the founder of Omega mm -hmm. uh, that said, hey, you know, listen, we tried to do the best we could. Mm -hmm. The way that the way that this letter is framed is bonkers. It's very interesting. The, the statement is bonkers. So essentially, what they said what they said was, "Hey, we have some of the best mm -hmm. moderation of any website. We believe that we have some of the best moderation tools. We have some of the best abuse tools. We have some of the best AI to search for uh, inappropriate content." of anywhere, when you have an open space, you cannot control everything that everybody does in that open space. And that is true. And we did our best. And then they went off into this thing where they started Omega. Mm -hmm. They were like, I was essayed mm -hmm. and I didn't feel safe in public. So I started Omega to be a safe space. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going, it's not my job to to litigate or doubt that. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it do seem like you also would know mm -hmm. how much unsafe stuff was going on no. on your service. And I'm going to disagree with that. I'm going to push back on that because here's what it is. Even if someone knows, what, mm -hmm. it, what a lot of the time we see happen is one person who has experienced some type of traumatic event in their mm -hmm. life thinks that they know how to take care of other people who have also experienced that. And one person's coping mechanism is very frequently not everyone's coping mechanism. So in this, if that's something that makes you feel like you are dealing with it by being exposed to potentially mm -hmm. dangerous situations in the safety of your own home, that is a perfectly fine way for you individually to cope with your uh, oh, experience of trauma. Right. What it isn't fine with is saying, well, the website is okay for this reason, or it's okay that it's happening to people for this reason, right. or uh, you're, you know, if you have a problem with it, that's invalid because, yeah. uh, uh, well, I experienced this thing and I don't have a problem well, with it. And they also weren't, they weren't, they weren't even getting into the psychology of like being exposed to it in a safe space is there. They were saying like, I did it so I wouldn't have to put my body into public space. And that is so the I same thought, thing it's though. kind of, yeah. It but is the same thing. But it's like, I knew that there would be no danger for me here. And mm -hmm. it's like, but Psychological that's, danger is still danger. Yeah, but you're not allowed to say what's dangerous for everyone. Correct. And you're not allowed to ignore mm -hmm. dangers of other people. Yeah. Like you have to, what I'm saying is, even if you, like, like you're saying is, even if it is something that's good for you, mm -hmm. you cannot as a person who wants to be healthy and wants to, understand and be sensitive to the needs of other people, mm -hmm. just ignore that. And that's why I think that this this statement rings, I'm not, it just rings odd to me. It does ring very, very odd. It because rings a part tiny of the bit reason, manipulative, you know? Though it's not being officially confirmed that this is the reason, uh, there was actively a um, lawsuit. There was a class action lawsuit mm -hmm. uh, against the site for misconduct, for endangering children, and for like um, trying not to say words that YouTube and Twitch hate, yeah. um, but like potential uh, danger to children, right? Yeah. Um, there were different words used, but um, it does say that they are ordered potentially to shut it down uh, in this. So this is just a screenshot that we have here that says the court have been informed by the council of the parties of this action has been settled. It is the pursuant that this action is dismissed without prejudice, whatever, cost leave, okay. Um, mm -hmm. They have 60 days to have this order dismissal set aside and the action of reinstated settlement not consummated. Yeah. Um, basically they're just saying like, there was a settlement and it seems like this was part of the settlement of having to shut oh, the yeah. website down formally. So one of the things that, they, that, that they've that they been talking about in this mm -hmm. statement and in some of the other uh, interviews and things they've mm -hmm. been giving is that it's simply, it's simply costing too much to fight the legal, beetle, the legal battles of being a proponent of free speech and freedom. Uh, every time there is just now, unfortunately, a red flag around <laughs> when people uh, use the word freedoms and free speech. Uh, there shouldn't be, because mm -hmm. there should be very positive uses of those. And there, unfortunately, seems very rarely to be in these cases. Yeah, there's, I mean, that that's some of the other stuff that goes on in this statement that, like, hit me really wrong. 
they compare uh, being asked to shut down Omegle or being told to shut down Omegle uh, to telling women to dress more modestly so they don't get um, so they don't get uh, inappropriate attention from men, um, which I think is a wild analogy to draw. You, that's not the same thing. Uh, Leaf K. Brooks, unsurprisingly, not a woman. Yeah. With that in mind. Uh, this also, did you see what the quote is at the start of this? Oh, the C.S. Lewis quote, yeah. So this is also weird. At the top of the page, which is just, you go to omegle.com right now, it is the like eulogy essentially mm -hmm. of, of Omegle. It is a C.S. Lewis quote that says, of all tyrannies, a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. It would be better to live under robber barons than under omnipotent moral busybodies. The robber baron's cruelty may sometimes sleep. His cupidity uh, may at some point be satiated, but those who torment us for our own good will torment, ter will torment us without end, for they do so with the approval of their own conscience. See, this is what I'm saying about this statement. A lot of martyrdom in this statement. This is bananas. A lot of martyrdom in this statement. This is so fucking gross. This is so gross. It's such a bummer because it's like, I wanted to sit here today and together be like, I remember this time on the internet. It's a good thing that it's going now, but mm -hmm. we can have a little pour one out for a different time, right? For yeah. uh, a service that we used, for something that was like kind of a part of our childhoods. Um, and we can acknowledge that it wasn't a healthy part of our childhoods. But instead, we're put in the position where we have to listen to this man be like, they're infringing on my freedom of speech and I know what it's like to be oppressed. It's it's bonkers. The because amount my website that endangers children has to go away because people keep suing me for endangering children. The This particular kind of like early or even current techie tech bro, yeah. where it's just like, I did what I did for freedom. And it's like, eh, shut up, shut up, dude. You did what you did without thinking. Yeah. Doing something without thinking mm -hmm. is something that you can do when you have freedom, yeah. but that doesn't mean that the thing you did, you did for freedom. Yeah. You did not think about it. And you put something out into the world that you were, it never occurred to you that anybody why would anybody be mistreated? Why would I think about that? There's continually things in here saying uh, fear can be a mental cage that keeps us from all of the things that make life worth living. Uh, uh, I've done my best to weather the attacks with the interests of Omegle users. Unfortunately, what's right doesn't always prevail. Uh, continually in here, um, the battle for Omegle has been lost, but the war against the internet rages on. Virtually every yeah. online community service has been subject to the same kind of attacks as Omegle. And while some are much larger companies with much greater resources, they're all gonna have their breaking points. I worry that unless the tide turns soon, the internet I fell in love with may cease to exist. Uh, I actually think I do hope that the internet that you personally fell in love with does cease to exist. Yeah, th this is it's turning a lot of ideology against people and mm -hmm. I think it's really weird. I love that I love this this statement right here. When they say that Omegle shouldn't exist, they are really saying that you shouldn't be allowed to use it, that you shouldn't be allowed to meet random new people online. Hey my guy, at any time during Omegle's existence, you could have put stringent age verifications in place. Yep. You could have done it. The reason you didn't Other do it- Other sites do it. Yeah, the reason you didn't do it is number one, you didn't want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And number two, you did not want to kick the kids and the perverts off of Omegle. No. Because you knew that's where most of your money was coming from. Right. You know, you knew that's who was looking at the ads. So, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's try to get it together here. I mean, and even at the end here, it's like, Listen, you know, uh, you, you should really, you know, if if, if you are uh, not into the idea of an internet focused on passive consumption with less opportunity for active participation and genuine human interaction, if you're scared of this, then you should donate to the Electronic Frontier Foundation. What the, do not, do not invoke the EFF right now, dude, and just be like, if you don't want to see more good people like me, good people, you know, the EFF protects good people like me. 
I bet this dude emailed the EFF and they were like, that's not, sorry, dude. <laughs> that's not a, that's why don't you put age us. verification on your yeah. site? <laughs> Bonkers. Uh, yeah. So, uh, this dude sucks. And instead of having a little, ah, a relic of my childhood is gone. Mm -hmm. I'm having a, well, thank God this relic of my childhood is gone. This guy sucks and should not be in charge of any online community. But hey, what we will put, we will do is pour one out for all the content creators <laughs> that are gonna lose, <laughs> that are gonna lose their are entire- still doing it? Oh my God. I haven't seen a video of somebody Massive. making anything on, on Omegle in years. Dude, I, I could tell like, you are not on the same part of it, but that Kermit the Frog, that Kermit the Frog puppet is pulling millions of views on TikTok. Harry Mack is touring the country doing like, and it's like topping billboard charts. They're big charts. enough to move on now. They're big they enough to move on now. They can do their own thing. It happened, it's passed. But uh, what else is passed is this show today. We are out of time and there is a lot of stuff that we actually didn't get to get to. <gasps> Uh, what will we do about that? Well, I suppose we'll talk about it on the Patreon because it's Friday. We have a Patreon? We do at patreon.com slash pixel circus. You can check it out. You can get a seven day free trial if you just want to preview the content, see what you're going to get. But you what, what, what do they get with it? You get a what week, do they get? You get a bonus clip from It's Too Early every single week. What? And other stuff. Other stuff? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I joined your Patreon. Hey. Thank you, Moose Beasy. Moose Beasy, I can read for joining our Patreon. We've had a bunch of lovely new patrons in the last couple of weeks, and we appreciate it so much. Uh, if you want to subscribe for a year, I know that's a lot of commitment. You do get 15% off, so you can save yourself a little bit of money. We have some new things coming to the Patreon very soon. We have lots of behind the scenes that goes up there, but uh, you can also just hang out with us more and get access to the entire library, backlog of content. That's all the failed save after shows. That's all of the it's too early clips from the past. Uh, that's the podcast audio. If you don't have Spotify, I'm also uploading it to the Patreon. Stuff like that, check it out. It is so helpful in keeping our independent content studio going. That's where I put uh, sometimes pictures and video clips of strange moles or skin tags I find. That's so not you can, true. So you can diagnose them that because is, your boy no, doesn't I have promise, the good insurance. I promise we will never post that on the Patreon. Anyways. Crowdfund addition, medical care. Now that Anthony does have. Uh, speaking of which, Anthony. Yes. Where can they find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet at A Carboni, except for here on Twitch where I'm at Anthony Carboni. Twitch, you cowards, it's mine. Give it back to me. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of an early stream this afternoon we've been Ooh. streaming some uh game of the year contenders and today we're going to be playing dave the diver people Ooh. keep saying play dave the diver anthony good. so i'm going to play dave the diver how about you sage you can find me everywhere on the internet at not sage i stream on my channel monday wednesday and saturday on saturdays i am playing the games of our childhoods and we are continuing the pajama sam series right now Ooh. going through the pajama sam franchise have you gone to the circus yet no whoa we're on the third pajama sam game alex what about you uh you can find you can find me on Twitter at Alder underscore Mancy. I'm also going to be on Rolling for Charity November 18th at 6 p.m. EST, twitch.tv slash Rolling for Charity. We're raising money for Doctors Without Borders, and I'm playing some Vampire the Masquerade. Nice. Woo. You can also join our Discord. It is free to do. You don't even have to be subscribed here on the channel to do it. It is open to everybody. We just want y'all to hang out. Uh, you can also suggest stories there. If there are things that you want to see our opinions on, see us mm -hmm. talk about. We do scan the Discord before every single show. So we know what the BBs want to hear. You can do things like follow the channel. You can subscribe. You mm -hmm. can follow us on social media to see all the extra things. That's right. And just showing up and watching the show is the number one thing you can do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific or on Spotify or YouTube later. 